Hello there. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining the Grand Reef. A whole seven people in my community really want this video, so here you go. Also, thank you, BR, for that comment that made me laugh. Let's start off with the most iconic part of the Grand Reef, the anchor pods. This iconic plant is only found in the Grand Reef. They also glow. The spear is filled with gas membranes. It would probably flow up to the surface like a buoy if it weren't for its root system. The roots wrap around the spear in order to keep it down. Once they have contained sufficient light, they burst, which releases spore into the currents, which starts the whole cycle of them growing again. Around this area, you can also find the membrane tree, which looks like they have a tiny little ecosystem in them. It is more than one coral species working together. They only grow in basalt rock near the Grand Reefs. If the transparent part of the tree is cut open, the purple fauna inside will most likely die on impact. Let's get on to the smaller creatures in the Grand Reef. You can find hoop fish, boomerang fish, and eye eyes here, some spine fish and bladder fish along with spade fish. And now let's get on to the bigger creatures. You can find at least one or two warpers here. They are found in mostly deep habitats, so it's not a surprise there. We also have jelly rays, which are normally found in the mushroom forest, but have resided here as well. It is a bit odd though, considering the mushroom forest and the Grand Reef are absolutely different. Maybe they're here for breeding season, or vice versa. Now let's get on to the apex predator, the crab squid. They have 10 different limbs. They most likely eat small bioluminescent fish and jelly rays. If they see any light source, they will use a kind of EMP blast. This can disable your subs. They may look like they have a huge head, but that's actually their stomach. It must eat regularly, so seeing us is a good opportunity for it. So it's probably not after you just to annoy you, it's more likely for food. And looking at the biology of them, it appears to make sense why it's in its head. Around here we can also find a ginormous ghost leviathan. Two of them, actually. You can also find sea treaders around here, but that's for a different video. It is 160 to 600 meters down. Through here you can get into the Lost River. One of the Dasagi bases lies down here. You can get some blueprints for beds, coffee machines, along with pictures and alien containment. You can also find a nuclear trash bin and a couple desks and chairs. The most useful thing in the building category are the multi-purpose room and the observatory. The observatory gives you a 360 degree view. And the multi-purpose room is just a ginormous room which you really need. Trust me, it makes everything so much easier. You can also find some hydrothermal vents around here. There are two different sections of it. The cave Grand Reef and the outside Grand Reef. None of them really changing except ones in a cave. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, you can also find Reginald fish here. You can also find a couple of gel sacks, which are really useful. This is going to be my PDA assessment of it. A beautiful biome but with interesting plant life, but very dangerous. Two types of leviathans here. One leviathan is dangerous while the other one is passive. Place is good for getting gel sacks. You can find useful blueprints here. Two carnivores, both dangerous. One herbivore, friendly. All small herbivores, friendly and make a good snack. Leviathan class. One dangerous, the other one is passive. And that is my assessment for the Grand Reef. Okay guys, that was the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a bit short, but hey. And I will see you next time. Okay, peace.